Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? You cute. And to all of the newbies, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side and I give my notes at the end. Insecure Season 4, Episode 4, entitled Low Key Losing It. It's all coming up next. It's Bunny. <laughs> Issa is putting together all of the potential graphics for the upcoming block party flyer. And so far, so good. Everything is going well. She's even seeing little messages here and there about her headliner and about how excited people are. And just as she's on this high of all of these exciting things, she receives a knock on the door. And when she opens it, she's got a lot of upset residents. And they're telling her that, hey, the water is off. What are you doing about it? It's not coming on. And Issa's just like, oh, man, that was today. You know, I completely forgot. Don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of it. We still have the timestamp to let us know that it is still one month before the big block party. Molly, she's super busy and she's so consumed with this new case. So much so that she forgets that Andrew was scheduled to come over. He tries to get cutesy with her and they end up going to the bedroom and he's trying to have sex with her. But he says, you're still thinking about your work, right? You can't even focus on me right now. She's like, I know. I'm so sorry. Let me just finish up on this last little bit and we'll get back to it. She gets back to her work. She finally comes to a stopping point, but she realizes that unfortunately now it's 1 a.m. in the morning, almost two o'clock. And she goes back to the bedroom and Andrew is knocked out but she kind of gets in the bed with him and he wakes up and he has no problem giving her the d Issa gets a call from ryan dns printers and he's like look i need your final notes for the printer by 5 p.m so the pressure is on Issa reviews some previous texts that she sent to condola but if you look at the messages it's been days since condola has actually responded and the only response that we see days later is i'll call you after work Issa then tries one more time to give her a call, but the call goes straight to voicemail. And Issa says, hey, I tried to give you a call. Call me back. And it's this awkward kind of weird energy about why Condola isn't responding to her. Molly is working late with some co-workers and they are approached by a young gentleman that's named BJ, but he now wants to go by Benjamin, but he checks up with them to see, hey, do you need anything else before I leave the office? They joke about how he wants to go by Benjamin now and they're like, no, we don't need anything. Get out of here. Have a good night. The co-workers ask Molly about what's up with that. And she's like, look, no, I used to mentor him through law school. He's too young. They talk about his age and everything. Molly says, you know, it's a shame, but I think he only dates Abigails, indicating that he only dates white women, that he plays the guitar and that he only eats salads. So it's evident that he's not messing with the sisters. They then say, man, it's late and I got to get back home. But one of the ladies, she has children to tend to, so she has to leave. But the other lawyer says, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and call my jump off. We've got to get this work done. And Molly makes an indication that my man understands and I'll just let him know that I'm working late. But the other co-worker says, man, you're canceling a listening party. Aren't you guys going to that? And she's like, no, he'll understand. Don't worry about it. So she cancels her plans with Andrew. Issa is driving along and she's listening to a podcast that's talking about developing oneself and how friendships change over time. And it really dawns on her. As she's about to park, she notices that Molly dips in at the last minute to take the parking spot as well. Instead of allowing Issa to continue to park, there's this inclination that Molly deserves this spot or it's hers. Issa gives up the spot and says that you can have it. But instead of saying, I was here first, she lets it pass. 
As Issa is walking to her destination, she listens to a missed voicemail from Nate. And he's saying that, hey, I heard you're having this block party. You're doing really good things. And just keep going. That's really good to hear. And it kind of gives her this energy of, wow, thanks. But it's really awkward. Issa and Molly meet up after parking. And Issa makes a joke that Molly should give her a ride back to her parking space since it's so far away since I gave you that spot and Molly responds and says well how could you let me have something that's already mine so there's this awkward energy once again Issa inquires to Molly and saying hey are we self still doing the self-care Sundays but their schedules are off and they're like hey let's just reschedule you know our our schedules are just crazy and Issa says well you still want to do the self-care Sundays right and it's this awkward well yeah I do and yeah and they go back and forth like yeah so it's just really really awkward Lawrence and Derek have a moment, a little man-to-man talk, and he's asking him, wow, how does it feel to have a baby? And not only that, how does it feel to have a daughter? And Derek is saying, you know, that it's wonderful, but he hates that he did all of the things in the past to women. And he thinks that this is God and karma giving him a daughter because soon he'll have to deal with young men trying to do the same thing to his daughter that he did to women himself. He then also says that, man, we weren't supposed to have a baby for another two years. We were supposed to do more traveling, and now all of that is on hold. It's not what I pictured, but we'll make it work. It's this emotion of this is not what we want, but we're dealing with it. And he doesn't really say it with a positive insight. Tiffany is ranting to the girls on the couch and she's saying, look, everything that they said about childbirth, that it's beautiful. Look, it's not. I haven't even showered in three days. I have this glow, but it's just oil because I haven't bathed. bathed. I'm over my mommy friends and they just worry about apprentices, appearances, and they're not even being real. And they're like, oh, wow. Like, we can't believe that. We can't, we can't understand why they wouldn't be real. It's this kind of sarcastic, you got to be kidding me from the girls. And she also talks about how I told doctors that something wasn't right when I was giving birth and they just ignored me come to find out that I had a blood clock and they talk about how wow that's how Serena Williams almost died because the doctors weren't listening to her and they discussed that how doctors don't listen to women of color especially when it comes to medical needs and their things that they have inclinations about that something isn't right but Tiffany says that gladly her husband had several different doctors to refer to Molly then says wow that's really how a good relationship works that dependency knowing that you can count on one another that's how my man is that is Andrew and jokingly Issa says okay Jada I see you red table talking and the girls get a little tee hee 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 and they have a nice little joke but Molly clearly lets her read on her face that she didn't think it was funny and Issa wants to let her know hey I was just joking it was a joke but Molly says you know hey I was just giving her a compliment how Derek was there for her and Issa was like well yeah and I was just trying to make a joke and there is awkward silence in the room Issa gets a call a DNA do not disturb from Trina and clearly it is an emergency but she continues to ignore it Issa talks with Kelly to the side after everybody else leaves the room she says hey has Molly talked to you Kelly's like no what's going on and she's like just Molly just keeps getting down my neck about every little thing and she acts like her life is just perfect and Kelly says well maybe she's taking it out on you maybe she's just stressed and there's a lot going on you two just need to talk and Issa says you know what she didn't want to bring her into it but it was just really bothering her as they're folding baby clothes and talking they see Lawrence from across the room and as he's in the other room Lawrence mouths the the words to her can we talk and Issa nods to confirm their little meeting as they go outside Molly sees Issa and Lawrence talking outside and she shakes her head in disapproval Molly asks Tif- Tiffany hey did Issa say anything to you Tiffany's just like well no about what and Molly explains that she's just been acting like I don't want to be happy I mean I don't know that's not the case but I mean, she keeps calling me old Molly, but look at her. She's acting like the old Issa talking to him. 
And Tiffany says, girl, you know that situation is complicated. Plus, maybe it's just a miscommunication between you two. And you two just need to talk because she's probably feeling the same way that you do. We go outside and we hear that Issa and Lawrence are really just having an innocent conversation about something that they saw on television. And they're just showing, sharing some laughs. And Lawrence asks her how she's doing. And she's just like, honestly, I'm just stressed about this whole block party thing. And I'm trying to reach out con to Condola, but I haven't gotten any response. And Lawrence says, well, yeah, there's something that I wanted to talk to you about. But before he can finish his sentence, Issa gets a call and he's like, well, you know, you can you can handle that. She's like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, just just answer it. And when she gets the call, she finds out that her headliner has dropped out and she's upset about that. And she's like, well, what do you mean my headliner is stopping and he's dropped out? I just had all of these flyers printed. I can't believe it. She hangs up with that individual and she's really, really upset. And she's like, dang, my headliner has dropped out. And he's like, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. She's like, you know, anyway, what were you going to tell me? And he tells her, you know what? It does doesn't even matter we can talk about that later so he doesn't get to continue what he said he wanted to talk to her about Issa tells the ladies look the baby is wonderful I'm sorry I gotta leave something just came up but I have got to go and Molly gives this kind of mm-hmm when she says that because she's under the impression that she's leaving because Lawrence is leaving Issa goes home and she tries to hop herself up in the mirror, but even her reflection isn't trying to hear it. She's already pissed off. She goes into her room and she's looking at different people on Instagram. And it's a funny moment how she sees Beyonce's Instagram page and decides to DM her. She starts to DM her. And it's this funny message like, hey, girl, I know you're busy, but I'm dying and this is my last wish. And she stops and she thinks about it and she deletes it like, eh, that's not good. I don't want to send this lie to Beyonce. <laughs> so she deletes that DM and then she starts to research local L.A. artists. And she starts to just be a little bit more proactive instead of taking the L on the situation. So she's calling around to different people and there's these comical scenes where she's like, hey, I heard that you're trying to you're still doing rap. You're still doing such and such. Have you heard from this person? Oh, they're dead. Oh, dang, my bad. Okay, she called somebody else. Oh, you're saved now? You don't do that anymore? Oh, okay. No, I won't go to church. I'm just gonna go. So it's this funny, these funny calls that she's making. And she's trying to find someone to headline. Later on, Molly and Andrew have dinner. And Molly has plans with him for later on. She's planned a nice evening of some sex and nice food. But unfortunately, Andrew says, you know, Tonight, I plan something with the guys. Tonight is poker night. And she's just like, well, tonight is our date like his night. And he's like, I know you've just been so busy that I took it upon myself to just plan something with the fellas. And of course, Molly is upset that he can't drop what he's doing because she's free now. So it's a slap in the face that she can't get what she wants when she wants it. It's just that their schedules are very conflicting. And it wasn't the response that she was expecting. Issa is still trying to find headlines. And when she does find an artist that she likes, she notices that with, they're with Live Nation. So she gives a call to Molly. And Molly sees that Issa is calling her. And she gives this sigh of relief. And even her body language react, re relaxes because she's really thinking that they can talk. And Issa says, hey, do you have a moment so we can talk? And she's like, yes, girl, this week has just been crazy. And she cuts her off. And says hey 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 you know I know but I really have something I need to talk to you about you know I'm really trying to find this artist and I see that the artist that I like you know they work with Live Nation and Andrew works with Live Nation so you do you think you can talk with him and Molly gives this just this disappointed look and thinking like wow I really thought I was going to talk to my friend but instead she's asking me for something and she says well I'll ask him so I'll do what I need to do and Issa quickly says, well, thank you. And they hang up. Molly later on pops over to Andrew's house and she wants to talk about the previous night. She apologizes for being so busy. And Andrew says, you don't have to apologize for being busy because, you know, of course I get busy too. But I just don't know where I fit in with your schedule. And Molly says something that finally makes sense. She's finally being honest and says, look, I haven't been in this situation 
where I'm trying to make things work and also make time for a relationship. So this is all new to me, but you do matter to me. And I really, really want to make this work. And Andrew seems like he understands, which is a plus because finally Molly is doing sacrificing and she's expressing how she feels a little bit more instead of trying to dominate and control the situation. Issa gets a call from Molly and Molly says, hey, how are you doing? And Issa's like, oh, my friend, my friend, I'm so excited. How are you? You do everything for me. You're going to ask him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the best. And Molly says, um, no, we have to talk about something. And Issa says, did you get a chance to talk to Andrew and ask him when I needed you to ask him? And Molly says, no, I didn't ask him and I don't plan to. And of course, Issa's confused about what's going on and she's just like, wow okay did you guys break up or something and molly's just like no i mean andrew does what he does and i just want to keep that part of my life separate and i hope that you understand and Issa is just completely just shocked that she even said something like that to her and Issa goes no i i get it and they hang up with one another Issa goes to the restroom. She sees the reflection of herself and her reflection says, girl, do you want to talk about it? And Issa says, no, I just want to take a shower. And she goes to the shower, cuts on the water and that water is brown and she has forgotten about the water situation. And it is a no, 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 not in my house. That water is still not working. Poor Issa. <laughs> <laughs> that is the end of the episode. And let's talk about this dynamic with Tiffany and Derek. It's obvious that they are being honest that clearly this was a child that they hadn't planned on. But what gets me is that if you're married and you're not taking the precautions, right, to not have children when you get pregnant, what is the big surprise? Because you're married and it's possible that you're going to get pregnant. It just goes to show that you have to emotionally prepare yourself for something like that. And also, was the communication dropped in their marriage to say, hey, what are we doing to take the precautions not to get pregnant if this is something that we really don't want to do? Do you think that the child is going to be a strain on their marriage? Because they seem a little upset and negative about the child even existing. Let me know what you think about that. So Issa and Nathan, do you think that Issa has it in her head that Lawrence just sees her as a friend and that he's still with Condola and that she will move on and speak with Nathan? Or do you think that she says that's a closed chapter and this is a negative reminder of what ruined my previous relationship from before? What do you think about that? Also, Lawrence and Issa, that relationship, do you think that he was about to tell her that, hey, I still have feelings for you and that Condola? Dola and I aren't together anymore and do you think that we could talk it looks like he was on the verge of telling her that which was this oh, oh wow what's going on Molly and Issa when Issa called Molly and told her that her headliner wasn't you know, going to be there and that had fallen through, Molly does try to step in from a lawyer's perspective and ask her a few legal questions. Why did your headliner quit? Why did they cancel? Didn't you have a contract securing them as a headliner? And Issa says, yes, I do. I do have a contract, but I'm at a point right now of desperation, just trying to secure and lock in a headliner. So she's surpassing the legal things that matter and saying, hey, this person can't just skip out on you at the last minute but she's not thinking clearly from a legal perspective so do you think that that will backfire and molly being a lawyer won't help her out do you think that she'll help her out with that i really think that molly is frustrated as i've said in the previous reviews that Issa is not in the same dynamic of friendship for example she has been used to Issa not having things to go her way a relationship that's not working a career that's not working so now that things are letting up for Issa, there seems to be this tone of you're supposed to be the friend that's beneath me you're supposed to be the friend that makes me look 
look good. You're supposed to be the friend that never has things to go right. And now that I can't control your downfall, she's not liking that. Very, very controlling and very, very toxic. I want to save this topic for last. In the scene where Molly was talking to her co-workers about BJ, about Benjamin, she says that he looks like the type to date Abigail's. And I thought that that was something very unique that the real Issa Rae wrote into this script. Is it wrong? Well, it's not wrong. In my opinion, I think it is wrong to make judgments based off of stereotypes. They said he eats salad and he plays the guitar. It's all assumptions. Myself growing up, going to predominantly white institutions, I can make a good guess that people have inclinations about me, my taste, and who what I enjoy. But as a people within the culture, do we tend to do that? Do we categorize people in certain categories without speaking to them first? Is it this is it this preconceived notion that black culture is just this one thing? Behaviors are just this one thing. We have to get out of the habit of doing that. And I think that's something that they sprinkled into the episode for us to think about. Black culture isn't just one thing. Black love isn't just one way. So seeing that dynamic and to have that dropped really, really had to raise some eyebrows because... That lets us know that Molly judges people, especially men, and that which could be a potential relationship. This could be, or anyone else, could have been a good potential relationship or friendship. But instead of asking and spending time with that person, she's making judgments right off the top. Do we tend to do that with people? If we see a black guy on the skateboard, are we coming to a conclusion about what type of black, quote-unquote, man that he is very very good and I loved it in that in the episode that actually can be an episode all by itself but of course unfortunately we only have 30 minutes for each episode which drives me crazy I need an hour but anywho I hope that you guys enjoyed this recap. I know that I did. Let me know your thoughts. Blow up the comments. Remember to be nice to one another. And let me know what you think. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any post. And also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. And until then, check out other movies and television show recaps and reviews in the playlist. Don't miss it. I love y'all. Be safe out there. Don't undermine COVID-19. It is very serious. Okay? I love y'all. See y'all next week. Bye.